Hello and welcome back to this video on second order systems. In the previous videos, we've looked at some of the basic building blocks of both electrical and mechanical systems. And in the previous video, we started to put these together to form equations for first order systems. And they took the um, form of first order differential equations. In this section, we're going to assemble some expressions for second order systems. And as you'd expect, the reason that they are second order systems is because they'll be expressed in terms of second order differential equations. So here's our first example. We're going to look at this circuit here, which is a series RLC circuit. And as you can see, there's a supply voltage VS supplied to this series circuit. And the output of this circuit, we're taking as the voltage measured across the capacitor, VC. So again, similar principle to our previous video, which I'd recommend watching first if you've not already watched this one, but we're gonna use Kirchhoff's voltage law to first assemble some kind of equation to represent this system. And it's gonna look something like this. VR of T plus VL of T plus VC of T equals V S of T. In other words, the voltages across each of these components must add up to the supply voltage. That's Kirchhoff's voltage law. As was the case in our previous video when we looked at first order systems, likewise in this example, we want to see one side of the equation entirely in terms of the input, V S of T, which is the case for us, but we also want to see the other side of the equation entirely in terms of the output, so in terms of Vc of t. So in order to do this, we're going to make some substitutions, and to do that, we're going to revisit some of the describing equations we looked at for each of these components. So we list them here. We have, for a resistor, Vr, the voltage across a resistor, is equal to Ri, or R times I. For the inductor, Vl, is equal to L times di by dt and for a capacitor we have 1 over c multiplied by the integral of current i with respect to time. So returning to our equation here that we've already set up let's substitute for vr and VL, because we don't want to see those in our equation. We want everything in terms of VC. And so when we make those substitutions using these definitions here, we have something that looks like this. So now we have a left-hand side that's in terms of VC and in terms of I. These are both functions of time as well, VC of T and I of T. And again, we don't really want I of T on the left-hand side. We want everything in terms of VC of T. So our final step is to revisit these describing equations. We're going to revisit this uh, equation for the capacitor. We said Vc is equal to 1 over C multiplied by the integral of current with respect to time. And I want to make a substitution there to substitute for I and replace it with Vc. So we want to rearrange this equation in the form of I equals so that we can substitute um, for these I terms here. So this is going to involve differentiating both sides of the equation since the I term is currently within an integral. We want to sort of cancel that integral out with a, with a, a differential or a derivative. And so if we take that equation and we differentiate both sides, we have something that looks like this. We have dVc by dt is equal to 1 over c times I, the integral has kind of disappeared due to taking the derivative there. And we can now rearrange that to say I equals C dVc by dt. So now we have an expression for I that's in terms of Vc. And so we can substitute this for our equation that we've set up here. So we see something now that looks like this. Rc dVc by dt plus L C D V C by D T by D T plus V C of T equals V S of T. Now we've made a mess with this second term here, this um this L term. 
because we have a derivative of a derivative uh, just by the way we've substituted that straight in there. Um, but that would be better written as a second derivative like this. So we now have d squared vc of t by dt squared. So notice that this equation now, we have a second order differential equation, but it's entirely in terms of the output vc of t on the left hand side here. All of our um, functions in the time domain are all vc of t. And on the right hand side, everything is in terms of the input vs of t. We look at one more example in this video, and this is for a mechanical example. And here we have a free body diagram similar to uh, the last video where we looked at a dash pot mass system. Here we have a dash pot spring and mass system set up as shown. So let's, um, just like in, in the first order example, let's evaluate the system of forces that's acting on this mass because we can see here that we're exerting a force to the right here, this F of T. But if we just consider for a moment the opposing forces that are working against that force, F of T, we have the force of the dash pot, F D of T. We have the force of the spring, F S of T. And we also have the force produced by the inertia of the mass itself, which I'll call F M of T. And so by conservation of forces, we should be able to say something like this, that F S of T plus F D of T plus F M of T must be equal to F of T. Again, just like our previous RLC circuit example, we have um, a left-hand side here, which is all in terms of different parameters, different forces, but we want to be consistent and be entirely in terms of the same thing on the left-hand side, which is what we're going to consider as our output or what we want to analyze in this case. We could substitute so that everything is in terms of F D of T, the force on the dash pot. Uh, we did that in the case of the first order example in the previous video. We could substitute so that everything's in terms of Fm of t, the inertial force on the mass. Um, for our example, let's rearrange or substitute so that everything on the left-hand side here is in terms of Fs of t, the force on the spring. Let's suppose that we want to see how the force of the spring changes as we apply this input force. So we're going to take Fs of t to be our output. And that means we need to replace or substitute for these F D and F M terms. So we'll do this by revisiting the describing equations for mechanical systems that we outlined previously um, in a previous video when we looked at the building blocks. Here they are again. Uh, for a dash pot, F D is equal to mu V. For a mass, F M is equal to M D V by D T. And for a spring, F S is equal to K multiplied by the integral of v with respect to time. Okay, let's apply these then to replace fd and fm in our equation here. And we'll end up with something that looks like this. So now our equation is in terms of functions fs of t and v of t, the velocity of the system. But again, we're only looking for f s of t on the left hand side. So to deal with this, let's revisit the spring equation. f s equals k multiplied by the integral of the velocity with respect to time, because this relates the two. We want to convert these velocities into f s at the end of the day. So similar to our previous electrical example, we've got to differentiate this function in this case in order to transform it into the form of v equals, that's what we want. So here's our equation again, fs equals k multiplied by the integral of velocity with respect to time. We're going to differentiate both sides. So fs is we're going, to, going to become d fs with respect to time. And on the right hand side, 
Um, k is just a constant. The integral of velocity is now just velocity. The differential or the derivative and the integral have cancelled one another. And then we can simply divide both sides by k and we have something that looks like this. v equals 1 over k multiplied by the derivative of fs with respect to time. So now we have an expression for v. Let's use it to substitute for wherever we see v of t where it appears in our equation. We see something now that looks like this. fs of t plus mu times 1 over k uh, times the derivative of fs of t with respect to time plus m multiplied by the derivative of 1 over k multiplied by the derivative of d f of s by dt um, or with respect to time dt that being equal to f of t. Now again I've just substituted these terms in exactly as we see them and it's made a mess in a few instances we can tidy up a few things here this mu times 1 over k, well we can better just say mu over k. And over here we have this 1 over k um, inside a, a derivative. Well 1 over k is just a constant so I can just pull that outside the derivative, it doesn't make any difference. So we have m over k. And we also see here that we have a derivative of a derivative and that's better expressed as a second derivative. Uh, d squared fs um, or fs of t with respect to dt squared and that's still equal to our input f of t on the right hand side. So hopefully you've found in this video we can use those building blocks that we saw previously to produce second order differential equations to model the behaviour of the system where in each case we want to make sure that one side of the equation is entirely in terms of what we're considering as the input and the other side of the equation is entirely in terms of the output or the parameter that we wish to analyse or evaluate. In these videos we've just set up these, these equations, these models of systems, but in later videos we're also going to try and solve these equations using different methods to observe how these parameters can be analysed in more detail as well.